the P series, 1 over 1 to the P, plus 1 over 2 to the P, plus 1 over 3 to the P, etc., has very simple convergent divergent behavior. If P is greater than 1, then the terms get small fast enough for the series to converge. If P is between 0 and 1, then the terms do not get small fast enough, and so the series diverges. We'll prove this behavior of P series using the integral test, which I've written here in case you've forgotten it. We'll be able to evaluate the convergence or divergence of a series by evaluating the convergence or divergence of this corresponding integral. Link in the description to my lesson introducing the integral test if you need to review. So let's go through the proof that this is indeed the behavior behavior of P-series, and we'll finish with a few examples of seeing if a particular P-series converges or diverges. Let's start with the case when P equals 1. If P equals 1, the corresponding P-series is just the harmonic series, 1 over 1 to the 1, plus 1 over 2 to the 1, plus 1 over 3 to the 1, and so on. It's the harmonic series, which we know to diverge. For cases when p is not equal to 1, we'll go ahead and use the integral test. We know that the integral test applies because the corresponding function is f of x equals 1 over x to the p. And this is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x at least 1. x is at least 1, of course, because the p series starts at n equals 1. So the corresponding function we will consider when x is at least 1. Certainly it's positive because x is positive and p is just a power. It's continuous because we're not plugging in 0. And it's decreasing as well. x to the p is just going to get bigger and bigger as x gets bigger. If p is something like 1 tenth, then we're taking tenth roots of the denominator. And that's going to grow rather slowly. But the denominator does still grow, and so the function will be decreasing. So we integrate the function 1 over x to the p from 1 to infinity. This is the same as letting our bounds be 1 to b and taking the limit as b goes to infinity. Now this 1 over x to the p is just x to the negative p, which is straightforward to integrate. Just increase the power by 1, so negative p plus 1, and then divide by the new power that power of negative p plus 1, which is the same as 1 minus p. That's just reverse power rule, so we've integrated the function. Now we'll have to evaluate the limit and plug in these bounds. Plugging in x equals b, we have b to the negative p plus 1, which is the same as 1 minus p, so b to the 1 minus p, still divided by 1 minus p. So that's the upper bound. We're taking the limit of that as b goes to infinity. When we plug in the lower bound, we just have... 1 to the negative p plus 1, which is just 1. So that's 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we of course still just have 1 minus p. And we are subtracting that. Our conclusion about the convergence or divergence of the p series is going to come down to the convergence or divergence of this integral, which we see is going to depend on the value of p. So let's consider the two cases. In the case where p is between 0 and 1, not including 1, the power of b in the numerator is 1 minus some smaller number. So the power of b in the numerator is positive. Thus, as b goes to infinity, this numerator is going to get arbitrarily large. It's getting divided by some finite positive number, and we're subtracting something from it. But that's not going to change the fact that it diverges to infinity, because this numerator is diverging to infinity, and the denominator is a fixed positive number. Since this integral diverges when p is at least 0 and less than 1, the corresponding series diverges as well. You can see in the case where p equals 1, we get some zeros going on here. It's more complicated, so it's good that we know when p equals 1, we have the harmonic series. We already discussed that. We know that diverges. All right, now let's consider when p is greater than 1. If p is greater than 1, then the power of b in this numerator is negative. b to the 1 minus p, that's b to a negative power. So if we move it to the denominator, it will have a positive power, and then would be b to the p minus 1, because p is greater than 1. So this is equal to this. And clearly, as b goes to infinity, this expression in the denominator will just be going to infinity. So it will be 1 over infinity, which is 0, minus this. 
So the results will just be that, minus one over one minus p, just some finite number. Once more, the power of b being negative, moves it to the denominator if we want to give it a positive power and so the denominator would be going to infinity so this goes to zero and we're just left with negative one over one minus p and so the integral converges when p is greater than one hence the corresponding p series converges as well when p is greater than one and so we've established this theorem concerning p series and their behavior they will converge if p is greater than one and diverge if p is between zero and one inclusive. Let's see some quick examples. So take a second to look at these three P series, identify P, and determine if the series converges or diverges. In the first example, we have fourth roots in the denominators. A fourth root is the same as a power of one-fourth. So in this case, P is one-fourth, which is less than one. Hence, the series will diverge. Remember, these small p-values prevent the denominators from growing very quickly, which prevent the terms from getting super small super quickly. That's why the series diverges. In example two, we have a p-value of positive four over three. Remember that the value of p is the power of n in the denominator. So in this case, we see it with a negative exponent. If we move it to the denominator, it has a positive exponent of 4 over 3. Since this is a p-series with p equal to 4 thirds, which is greater than 1, this series will converge. The terms are getting quite small, quite fast. Finally, in this last example, we have a p-series with p equal to pi. Pi is definitely greater than 1, and since that's the case, this series will converge. So that's a quick look at the behavior of p-series and how to prove that behavior with the integral test. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count with calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter. The rapidest happens like this. My lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.